Everybody's here. We got Bruner, we got the Euros, they're looking at Oh, who who's this guy? Who is that guy in first place? I don't even know who that is. Mr. Unknown, who's leading the race, manages to take himself out in the third turn. Good job, buddy. A good rule of thumb for positioning is if you don't know who they are, they probably shouldn't be in front of you. This guy in the black kit, I have no idea who that is, so I don't really like that he's in front of me and I'm gonna pass it. about to go into the technical forest part of the track and I always like to give myself a little bit of a gap of the rider in front of me so that if they screw up it doesn't screw me up. jump onto a dual slalom track which is a pretty cool feature to put into a cross race however there are a couple pretty rough sections and you gotta ride them pretty gently so that you don't end up with puncture but I'm a fan of the dual slalom track Watch the Marion rider in front of me make a poor line choice as he puts himself on the inside of the Trek rider, having to slam on his brakes and lose some momentum, taking him off his line and letting a little gap open to those riders. Uh, just a bad place to put yourself. Yo, Dizzle, what's up? Why ain't you hopping the barriers, bro? 
Yeah, I had a lot of people saying that to me, and I was kind of thinking the same thing. It was definitely a disadvantage, as you can see the gap open here, and I've got to chase that down. But I just haven't practiced hopping the barriers since before I broke my wrist, and uh, I just need to get in some practice before I do it in a race. And I can make the argument that not hopping the barriers wasn't that big of a deal because I'm still with that group. But as you saw, I had to burn a match to get there and eventually burning those matches adds up to something. If you find yourself leading the race, a good strategy when you're hitting the pavement like this is to hit the pavement with some speed so that even the tiniest of gaps like this force the riders behind you to chase to get into your draft and you're not just letting them get there for a free ride. All right, this is rad. That Marion rider sees an opportunity to go to the front and drills it and in doing so, he passes the reigning Pan Am national champion and two Europeans to do so. That's pretty cool. That's a grab the bull by the horns kind of scenario and I can appreciate that style of racing. I'm all about aggressive racing, but uh, that pass was kind of sketchy, and I can already tell that I do not want this guy in front of me. Just by the way that he's handling his bike, I can tell that he's going to screw up, and when he screws up, it's going to screw me up. And so I am looking for a chance to pass him as soon as possible. All right, I see my chance to pass him, and everybody's going to avoid this mud and go to the left, so I'm going to go right and make the pass. But now I find myself kind of moving fast, and uh, why not just go to the front? I mean, when's the last time that I have led a UCI cross race? I mean, let's do this thing. All right, Dizzle's attacking. And I guess I'm just so threatening that after 10 seconds of being on the front, the Euros aren't cool with that so this guy passes me maybe it's a good strategy because if he puts me in between Bruner and David Haverdings then uh, Ferdinand could get the gap but he could also just be passing me because he wants to lead through the technical section both of those are good reasons to pass and I commend him for doing so so uh, remember on lap one when I said give the guy in front of you a little bit of a gap so that if they mess up it doesn't mess you up well 
Uh, Ferdinand kind of stalls out there towards the top, uh, and I was a little too close to his back wheel and had to jump off and run a couple steps, and the gap has now opened, and I'm forced to chase that. Kind of frustrating, but I guess that's racing. I should have taken my own advice. If you know you're not gonna hop the barriers, then a tactic that you could deploy is definitely to pass all the other riders who can hop and get in front of them so that they have to do the barriers at the same speed that you do them, and that minimizes your losses. They're probably still gonna pass me here, but now I'm not forced to chasing this entire straightaway like the last two laps. And maybe part of you feels bad for doing that, but this is a race, and that's definitely allowed. And let's give credit where credit is due. I mean, I am the one that softened everybody's legs so that when Brunner attacked right here, they were all tired because of how hard I attacked on the last lap. I mean, come on, let's be honest. But seriously, that was a killer move and he already has a pretty big gap. Like he came around us so fast. Like that just shows you how strong Brunner was in this race. Ferdinand is making it pretty clear that he really wants to lead this forest section, so every time on this uphill he's doing what he can to get to the front of whatever group he's in, just like he just did to me in Haverdings, and uh, that's a good strategy because if he's leading, nothing bad can happen to him, right? Like Haverdings just almost slid out. If that happened in front of Ferdinand, it could have caused a crash, right? So him leading in the most technical parts of the section is the safest place to be, and uh, that's a smart, smart decision. Ferdinand is able to bridge up to Bruner and me and Haverdings are still on the chase.
really got my eyes on that podium, which means I have got to get rid of Haverdings one way or the other. So feeling pretty good, I go on the offensive and try to attack through all of this technical section coming up. We'll see if he can hang. He's definitely still right on my wheel right here, but one good strategy for when you're attacking is to really hit it hard like on sections right here. We just did a hard climb and this is the flat section right after that really steep climb. And this is when mentally people are going to be struggling the hardest, so this is the spot where you want to try to accelerate as much as you can. If you can get a little bit of a gap, all you need is for them to throw up that white flag and let that gap open and you have the advantage. And after all of that, he's still right on my tail and he knows that I'm not gonna hop the barriers and so he makes the pass right here. Smart move, not gonna lie. I'm pretty gassed from having attacked. He's gonna get a little bit of a gap here. I'm thinking, all right, I just need to recover and then I'll chase him down. However, this gap never really comes back. This steep hill is the nail in the coffin. I am still dangling behind him right now, but I just completely blow up basically right here and the gap just extends very quickly. And in a matter of a quarter of a lap, he's already two turns ahead of me and the fight is pretty much over. I'm pretty sure I'm not bringing it back. Thankfully, there is a pretty decent gap between myself and fifth place, so all I have to do is keep it clean for the last lap and a half, and I should be finishing in fourth place on the day.
hop those barriers. Oh, I was watching that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, every, every time you're watching, like, all right, you two are together. That's a great move for Mike. And then next boss, right? Do I have to push the redo? I know, that's why I blew up right after that. Good job, Mike! <laughs> I put myself job, in the job. Oh okay. yeah, I was like, I'm gonna attack. And I saw that, I was like, okay. I was like, might as well. Yeah. 